Hi everyone, welcome back to Five Quote Shakespeare Hamlet. Today we're going to look at Act 1, Scene 4. What I do in this series is I first give you a nutshell overview of the plot events of each scene, and then we dive deeply into each scene and pull out five quotes that I think are really useful to help you understand the play's characters and themes. Act 1, Scene 4 is what we could call a transition scene. Now, if you remember at the very beginning of the play, we were introduced to the ghost by Marcellus and then by Horatio. And then in Scene 2, Act 1, Scene 2, Horatio revealed to Hamlet uh, what was going on, that they had seen his father's ghost. And then it, the, the story changed track, and we saw some of the domestic problems with, uh, with Ophelia and Polonius and Laertes. Now we're getting back into this, in, into the into the tension of the ghost. Now remember what's happening. Think about what's, what Shakespeare is doing to the audience. He's making them, he, he teases them with this spooky ghost stuff, which is great Hollywoody stuff. It's the equivalent of a big, you know, airplane battle scene or, or a car tra chase scene or something like that. And then he, he calms down things a little bit, brings it back to the do domestic front. Uh, and then he starts to ratchet it up again. Well, this transition scene is merely a ratcheting up because Hamlet doesn't meet his father here and we're waiting for him to meet the ghost. We really, really are. That's what we're on our edge, the edge, edges of our seats about. But we don't meet the ghost until, uh, Hamlet doesn't speak to the ghost until uh, scene five. So this is that kind of transition scene. So Hamlet meets Horatio and Marcellus on the battlements. Hamlet goes off on some kind of, you know, poetic, you know, meandering, semi-rant about humanity's flawed nature and the cruelty and injustice of public opinion. Um, again, that's that's just kind of Hamlet's philosophical musings. Uh, the ghost arrives and beckons to Hamlet and Hamlet follows and that's where the scene ends and that's where again we're on the edge of our seat waiting for what happens next. Okay, well this is a transition scene but there are a few important points that I, I really want you to pay attention to because they'll be very useful when you're trying to decide whether or not Hamlet's a coward for not killing Claudius earlier, or whether he's smart, and and you could you could write two essays. One person could write two essays arguing both cases, and 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 the per, and the single person writing both essays would be convinced in both essays. That's how hard Hamlet is to to come to grips to. Okay, so they're out there, uh, Horatio and Hamlet and Marcellus, and it's very very cold. Blah blah blah. They hear some trumpets blow, and Horatio asks what it's all about. Now, this is the first thing that I'd like you to pay attention to uh, in terms of, of Hamlet's character. Hamlet says, the king doth wake tonight and take his rouse. Now, what's happening here is that, that Claudius likes his drinks. He likes to party. He's a, he's a bit of a party animal. And it seems, according to this, that that's a Danish national character anyway. And, and, and some, some, some nations, some cultures take pride in their, you know, their drinking prowess and stuff, stuff like that. And I think that's part of what's going on here. The Danes take pride in their drinking, not in their partying, their partying powers. Not so Hamlet, okay? So he, he laments the fact that this is the custom. It's the custom in Denmark to, to, to have these parties. Uh, and he, he doesn't like it, he says, uh, because it, it ruins our reputation abroad. Uh, neighboring nations clip us drunkards and with swinish phrase sour our reputation addition means reputation so he's he's, he's afraid for Denmark's reputation and I, I'm, I'm I really don't know what the truth is here um, I mentioned this in one of my early videos as well does is this evidence that indeed Claudius is that satyrish kind of character is he too lowbrow not not just lowbrow but is is, is he is he gross do you know what I'm saying? Is he a hedonist? Is he is he de is he deserving of Hamlet's contempt? And I'm not sure. I'm really not sure because throughout the play, at various points of the play, Hamlet does demonstrate that he's a bit priggish. He's a bit of a Puritan. He's he's sexually repressed. It seems there's lots of evidence for that as well. So again, try writing both essays. You know, is it, should we fault Claudius for being a gross pig, or should we fault Hamlet for being um, a prude? Uh, I really, really don't know. Um, part of this is connected to the wasteland theme. Uh, it seems like Denmark is is not doing well. It's not. It's well, but this is through Hamlet's eyes. Do you see? So it's through Hamlet's eyes. So how much can we trust that? Hamlet is very much an unreliable narrator, like Holden Caulfield in in uh, in Catcher in the Rye. It does, however hint at one side or the other of the mind-body duality. Go back and watch my theme video, I talk about that. That's what I mean about, you know, there's the body, satisfaction of the body's desires, or the satisfaction of the nobler, quote-unquote, nobler desires of, of the human creature. 
I really don't know. I really don't know. We could also throw into this the, the wonderful theme of projection. I love this theme. It comes up again and again. And the best literature has some variation of the projection theme because we, we all do it. It just depends on how pathological um, our doing of projection is. And I think Hamlet's is very much uh, uh, a pathological. Hamlet has a problem with the lower energies. Hamlet has, has a repressed... Uh, he, he's got a prudish sense of what is good and what is bad and everything that's low and, you know, partying and all that kind of stuff is, is according to him, really, really bad. Uh, is he projecting his own moral puritanical vision onto the world? Or is Claudius just having, having, a, having a good time? Is it, is it bad to have a good time like that? Do, do you see what I'm saying? So uh, is he projecting or is he, uh, or is he, is, or is he correct? I don't know. This next little mini rant is it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of hard to understand. Um, the gist of it is, is that he, Hamlet's lamenting. He's lamenting the gossipy nature of, 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 of humanity. And he, he, he laments that one defect in someone's character can, can destroy a relationship despite how wonderful everything else is about us. So we're 90% wonderful person, hardworking, generous-minded, good friends, loyal, whatever, and one little part of us happens to have a fault, and then we just judge the person by that fault. Uh, it, it's strange. It's strange that he's lamenting this, except if we think of it in terms of the hypocrisy theme, because he is very hypocritical. He's, he rails at his mother and Ophelia especially um, and, and refuses to cut them any slack whatsoever, giving them none of the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so he's guilty of doing this more than anybody in the play that I can see, um, which, is, which is weird that it's here, except to reveal Hamlet's own hypocrisy. Okay, he's interrupted in these, these musings, and I think Horatio's just kind of listening to him say, dude, we got, we got some business to take care of. Why are we talking about this? Anyway, they are interrupted by the ghost. Thankfully, Hamlet has to shut up. Okay, this, I believe, is the main takeaway of this short transition scene. They do see the ghost, and Hamlet says, angels and ministers of grace defend us. So he's freaked out by this, and he calls on the powers of goodness of the grace of God to protect him. Now, that's telling. It means that he doesn't trust this ghost immediately, and he goes on to say that. Be thou a spirit of health or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell. By thy intents, wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet. So that's the key, do you see? Now, the whole question in this whole play, and you will never be satisfied with your answer, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you'll never be satisfied no matter what side you come down on. Is Hamlet a coward for not just walking up to Claudius and sticking him with a knife? Or is he smart to hedge his bets at every moment, to pause and to wait for the absolutely right time? Both opinions are absolutely correct. And this is some evidence that he's actually quite wise uh, not to kill um, not to kill Claudius immediately until he has firm proof because as as um, uh, as Horatio suggests confirms down here what if the ghost tempt you towards the flood my lord or to some dreadful summit off the cliff he doesn't trust the ghost either so this is not Hamlet's projection this is not Hamlet's cowardice Back in those days, they believed in ghosts. It was a Christian, they had a Christ, Christian worldview, and in, in that particular Christian and, and medieval worldview, they believed that ghosts came back when there was something rotten in the state of Denmark, when, when the world was topsy-turvy, when something was not right with the world, the ghost would return to, to have it corrected, do you see? They also believed, however, that the devil could take the shape of somebody uh, that means something to a person in order to trick that person, do you see? So he's not sure. He's not sure if it's the devil or if it's an angel. He really, really doesn't know. Therefore, paralysis. How is he going to act? Should he just, uh, should he just, be would you believe a ghost that came to you in the shape of a dead relative and say, hey, could you go kill this guy for me, please? I'm a ghost from beyond the grave and I'm telling you to kill somebody in real life for me, please. Would you do it? Do you see what I mean? You'd stop and you say, wait a minute here, maybe I should get some better evidence on whether I should, whether or not I should before I go out and do this. So it's understandable. This is the thing. Um, okay, so there's the thought versus action theme. If you're smart and if you're thinking about all angles, you can be paralyzed. You might want to do an action, but if you think about it, you can see reasons why you shouldn't and those reasons might be legitimate. Even though if you're a coward, you can think your way out of something, but those thoughts might be legitimate. Do you see what I'm saying? So is, is maybe we can classify Hamlet as a legitimate coward. Does that make any sense? 
Uh, it's, 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 it's tough. It's really, really tough. So there he is, Hamlet, the thinker, not a doer. He's smart. Uh, it is the wasteland theme, the great chain of being, uh, because, you know, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. This, the ghost coming back suggests that something has been disrupted. There is a wasteland that must be cured by the hero. Go back and watch my theme videos. Appearance versus reality. That's a major theme in all of Shakespeare's plays, or almost all of them. And this one, absolutely, we have a, a, a shape that looks trustworthy. It looks, it look, looks like the, the, the guy's father, who Hamlet trusts. But in reality, they're not sure whether or not it's, it's, it's something that they shouldn't trust, like, like a devil. Okay, so tough call. Okay, so all, all through this, he, he's, he's, he's looking at the vision of his dead father. And as you can well imagine, he's just overwhelmed. Anybody would be by the vision of a dead loved one. Now, Hamlet especially, if we, if we, if we decide and if we agree, and I will argue that Hamlet, Hamlet's father was actually overbearing and Hamlet was very much a shrinking little boy in the massive shadow of a domineering father. I, I, I believe that to be true. Um, and I think, as I explained before, that's one of the, re I think Claudius as a younger brother was overshadowed by his older brother, um, um, uh, King Hamlet as well. So I think that explains a lot. Um, anyway, so after, you know, being awestruck, you know, in just caught in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the overpowering glow or blazing glow of, of, this, of this superpower, of this super being, that in, in Hamlet's mind, he's very much is the Hyperion sun god, this blazing forth his, uh, his, his, his power. And, and, and he's totally paralyzed. Look at this, look at the language here. He says to this vision, he says, say, speak to me. Why is this? What, what the hell's going on? Wherefore, wherefore means why, why, why? What should we do? Look at that, completely helpless little boy. He's reduced to a little boy. Um, it, it's very tender. The, these lines are, are very tender and very quite, and they're quite sad. And, and I think they, they, they give me a lot of sympathy for, for Hamlet, as messed up as the poor boy is. Um, to be overshadowed by a father like that, tough, <laughs> really, really tough. The ghost beckons Hamlet, and Hamlet is determined to go, but his friends are determined to not let him go, which is significant because it demonstrates that Hamlet is right not to trust the ghost, and he's right to delay the revenge in order to get confirmation that he's doing the right thing by, by murdering Claudius. Um, and he says, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. What should I fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. Now, I don't want to read too much into this, but it is curious. Remember, if, if you're in the hands of a great artist, then nothing on the page is an accident. Um, um, it, everything is an, uh, the author's choice. And Shakespeare put this in here for a reason. And I think it connects back to his first Hamlet's first soliloquy, where he says, oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt and resolve itself into a dew. There's a death wish there, a path, a passive death wish dc and this may be some this may be a bit of a you know death by cop it's it's like the person wants to wants to end their life but they, do, they don't have the courage to do it themselves and fair enough it's, it's a, it must be a tough job uh so they so they approach danger and they pursue danger in the hopes that that danger will snuff them out dc i think i think that that that, that might that might be part of it I, I don't know if you want to go too far with that or not but but there it is um so as we've seen already Horatio confirms Hamlet's suspicions, merely that they should be suspicious, not necessarily that the ghost is evil, but that they have to be careful, that's all. And that, again, is important. It waves to me still. So again, if, you, if, if you've seen one of the movies, they're physically holding Hamlet back and Hamlet's trying to go off, hold off your hands, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. The ghost beckons and then Hamlet goes. Um, here, he, as we said, uh, Hamlet is, is, is the undoer. He's the guy who can't do. He's, he's, for a guy who can't do much, he talks the talk, but he doesn't always walk the walk. Here, he's kind of doing both. My fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body, each small vein in my body, as strong and hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. So he feels he, he's manned up here, that's for sure, as he's going to his father figure. That's, that's pretty significant, and or to his death, do you see? So is that the, merely the death wish, and that's why he's so courageous? I don't know. There's, there's more, more mystery. Okay, so Hamlet exits, and we'll just wrap this whole thing up now with the famous line said by Marcellus. Uh, Horatio and Marcellus are alone, and Marcellus doesn't get many lines, but he gets a good one. Uh, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. He got a really good one. That, that's lasted for 400 years. And it's, it's merely, as we've talked about several times, it's the wasteland theme, the great chain of being. Something has been disrupted. Go back and watch my theme video. Something has been disrupted in 
society in the great chain of being and the hero has to set it right the big question is is hamlet up to the task and the answer is no and that was five quote shakespeare hamlet act one scene four come back for my next video act one scene five the big revenge plot initiating reveal where we find out what happened in the garden between king hamlet and his younger brother claudius thanks for watching